Okay, um, right. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, children, animals, everyone, um, to uh, the Real Robotics Lab for uh, the first of our demos for um, Robot Lab Live. So if the team, uh, so, so hi, I'm Jordan Boyle, uh, and here I'm now making big for you. Uh, oh, no, that's not right. Um, how do I make that the big one? Why? There we go. Okay, so over here I'm joined by, uh, 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 yeah, you guys just want to introduce yourselves quickly? Yeah. George. Hi, I'm George. I work on Pipebox, which is a, a nature robotics project uh, looking at inserting robots into wastewater and clean water pipelines across the UK. Okay. Hi, Hi, I'm Nick. I work, I work on the Ray project, which is robots on AI and nuclear. Um, looking at ways to improve the nuclear decommissioning process for use of robots. And Andy, you happen to be visible, so. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and he helps us on both of those projects. Okay, so if we're looking a little bit frayed and a little bit panicky and a little bit frantic, that would be part of the plan. That's entirely what we intended to do. Um, so we've been having a few minor issues last minute with, um, I don't know, the robots that we're demoing and maybe the uh, GoPro that we're supposed to be giving you close-ups with. But that's cool. We're just going to go with it for now. And I'm sure, you know, this first run through will maybe not be the best one this evening, um, but that's okay. So, uh, which one did we decide to start with? Are we gonna start with Pi Bear? Yeah, let's start with Pi Bear. Okay, oh, fantastic. Okay, so, 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 um, yeah, so the Pi Bear robot that Nick has over there uh, was, as he said, developed as part of a, a project funded through the Rain Hub for nuclear robotics. Um, it's an early prototype, so we haven't worried about like radiation protection or anything like that yet. But uh, Nick, do you want to just tell us a little bit about sort of the principle of operation? Um, uh, sadly, we're lacking the close-up camera right now. We, we, we do have a feed from the robot itself. Um, but yeah, no, I think the audience will be able to see all right from the uh, fr fr from the uh, static cam. Yep. Yeah. Um, so this is a robot that is designed for operation within two-inch pipes. Um, there's a lot of two-inch pipes up at the uh, nuclear cellar field site, um, which they kind of didn't really know what's in the pipe. Uh, it's decommissioned years and years ago, and they've kind of lost track of how radioactive it is, or they're not quite sure what's in the pipes in terms of contaminants. So there's quite a strong need to uh, have a robotic solution that will get inside the pipe. It can travel over long lengths and get around kind of the features that you'd normally find within a pipe network, like 90 degree bends and T-sections, which are typically quite difficult. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the key, to move around. Yeah, indeed, the key point is that uh, uh, various pipe crawling robots exist, but generally for significantly larger pipes than that. Yes, yeah. This and is the only robots that can actually get around uh, T-sections on like a two inch pipe scale. Cool. And so what's the sort of basic lo uh, locomotion approach principle? Yep, so there's, uh, there's six wheels on the robots, or on each module of the robots, and um, each wheel is powered by a tiny little DC motor, um, and each wheel is also spring-loaded outwards. So right, this is a, so it's like a wall press a type. Wall press okay, yeah. So it gains traction on the inside of the pipe um, by the elastic bands pulling the wheels towards the, um, the, the pipe wall. And, yeah, uh, creating contact and then it allows it to drive forward and carry quite substantial loads behind it. Cool. And um, I, I imagine the audience might be wondering what is the silver thing mounted on the front of your robot there? So this is kind of like a feeler. So okay. as it moves through the pipe, it, help, it helps it navigate around tight corners. Um, so okay. the kind of premise is as you get to a corner, you point it in the direction you want to go. And the feeder will go first and then right. pull the rest of the robots around and kind of as this sort of Okay, the yeah. Spaces. And it's maybe not obvious right now, but it is articulated in the middle it to is, help you yes, get around. Yeah, you okay. That's on the camera, but uh, yeah, unfortunately the GoPro. Cool. Is well, um, as you will see, audience, we have we have a small piece of pipe, which is totally not actually from, you know, a nuclear power station or anything. But there is there is a there's an area at the end of the pipe that we can't see into because it is covered in hazard tape. Um, and so we're going to use the robot and try and figure out what is hiding in that pipe. Is it radiation? We don't know. Probably not. Hopefully not. Or we're all 
what could it be? I'm going to die. Um, okay, so I'm going to make the um, robot's eye view the big one now. Um, there we go. We can see George through the little onboard camera there. Okay, maybe I did that prematurely. Maybe for now I will leave the uh, overhead cam. Um, yeah, hi, Claire, and hi, Jason. Thank you, guys. Um, I'll be interested to hear, I know it'll be slightly delayed, but uh, uh, Claire in particular, I'll be interested to hear whether you can hear us all when we're speaking because we had a few little little tiny hiccups with the tech. Okay, right. So Nick is ready to deploy Pi Bear um, into the end of the pipe there. Um, so uh, as it's quite common within robotics, actually, I think to use Xbox controllers as the, you know, the user control quite a lot of efforts been put into uh, optimizing them for ergonomics um, and they're wireless these days. <laughs> it was just off camera, but Nick <laughs> so nearly just tripped over the tether for his robot, wiped out, killing himself and destroying the robot in the process. No, I, I guess that didn't happen. Um, okay, so Nick, uh, yeah, you want to see if you can, if you can, Go and get for us. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make that one big. Excellent. Claire says she can hear us. Fantastic. So um, yeah. So I mean, right. Both of the robots that we're showing you today are like hot off the presses or you know off the printer. Um, so these are all still quite crude early prototypes. Um, so yes, there are all sorts of limitations, all sorts of issues. Um, so like, for example, here, we're using clear pipe just so that, you know, we can see what's going on inside. Okay, there you saw the feeler do its job. I'm not sure why it's squeaking so much. I'm sure it's not a problem at all. Um, but yeah, so I mean, so for example, if, if this was actually in a steel pipe, we would need a, a light source because we wouldn't be getting light inside from outside. Um, uh, are you managing? Nick? Let's try again. Yes, let's try again. I'm sure it'll work this time. Okay, yeah, I think it works better with the uh, uh, robot I view small. Oh, looks like, oh, there we go. He's made it around the corner. And oh my goodness, what is that that we see in the distance? I think, I think it is a radioactive duck. <laughs> And you will notice it is angry and has fangs, which means that is definitely top level waste needs to go into the dangerous waste stream, definitely. So, so make a note of that for later. Okay, now, now we get to see if he can back it out again. In the meantime, George, yes, you do see the back of George's head crouching on the floor. He's, he's just trying to, trying to get our um, GoPro talking to the other computer. Okay, well, I tell you what, if you're having trouble getting the robot out, just leave it in for now. So we'll sort it out in the downtime between. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go. Because we are, yes, we only have five minutes left before Q&A time. So let's, uh, let's have Nick come and help George with the, uh, with the GoPro. Sorry, everyone. Um, Yes, it is 100% professional. I mean, nobody has ever seen a more professional thing than this. Um, so I propose that we leave the GoPro out of this run through and try and fix it in between the sessions. So, okay. So, so Nick's robot that we just saw, okay, I mean, to be fair, he had a, a prototype of that working a few weeks ago. Um, and some things broke, so we had to make another one, which was finished yesterday. So, you know, that, that one much more sort of planned ahead. Um, the robot we're about to see now, though, um, yes, okay, fantastic. The hand cam is going. Brilliant. The uh, audio is still on the other one, right? Yeah. Okay, very well done, very well done. Remove the Pi Bear cam from screen. Okay, fantastic. We have a hand cam. Let's see a close-up of uh, of that handsome little robot. I don't mean George. 
Um, <laughs> he's a big robot. Um, okay, so so this robot that you're about to see demoed is literally the first prototype of this one that we put together. The, the idea here, let's talk about the context. Show, show us our awesome deployment mechanism there, right? Okay, so we're trying to do swarm robotics for real world outside applications here. Swarm robot hardware to date is pretty much like, you know, can only operate on a, on a smooth desk as maybe <clears throat> at the moment can as well, but soon, soon. So the plan is what you're seeing there is a, is a legged robot, a walking robot that we did not design ourselves off the shelf. And it's got a little uh, deployment mechanism, which ultimately there'll be another one on the other side. So the plan is that it will be able to deploy 20 of these little swarm trooper robots that we've been working on. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, let's have a close up at Swarm Trooper on the ground there. Um, this is oddly grainy feed. Never mind. Um, so, so as you can see, it has googly eyes, which definitely always improve the performance of a robot, which is just as well. Oh, and then give us a close up of the last minute edition um, high tech anti roll device at the beginning at the back. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if little Swarm Trooper Mark zero point one can make it through the pipe. Andy, take it away. Yeah, 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 not, yeah, that's great. Okay, so, um, oh, oh, there we go. Does someone's arm fit in there to uh, put it back on its feet? Okay, so let's just say, as we've been running through things today, we have realized that there is arguably maybe just a small, tiny little bit of room for improvement in our design here. Um, and we did have to super glue on that little plate at the back to stop it rolling over backwards, like whenever it tries to climb up a hill. But yeah, there we go. No, fantastic. That is, yeah, no. So so, so um, some refinement will be required, but the basic idea here is it's gonna be a miniature uh, swarm robot, um, which it's, it's got uh, quite a good electronics package inside um, camera, wireless comms, uh, uh, quite complex processing. Um, and then it is for locomotion using something called WEGS, um, which uh, are, are quite commonly used in robots. It's sort of a, uh, a sort of hybrid of wheels and legs um, with some advantages of, of both things. Um, and yeah, basically we just sort of realized today that it's kind of um, much more top heavy and uh, hence less stable than we were imagining, but um, oh yeah, yeah okay. So uh, yeah, so that went pretty that that went pretty smoothly, didn't it? Um, so yeah, there we go, there we go. I mean, how can you not love something that cute with those sweet little eyes? Um, all right, well let's uh, let's let the robots have a rest because I bet our audience is absolutely bursting with questions, um, surely. So I'm gonna make the static cam the uh, the big one now. Uh, I think I'll, I'll just remove the hand cam from the stream for the moment. Oh, of course, but uh, if without PyBear cam on, have we still got the, is the mic still on the PyBear cam computer? Okay, I'd better add that one back. All right. To our esteemed audience, um, and here, here it's going to be super awkward because we get lag. Um, but come on, people, you need to do your job and feed me some Q&A questions so that we can answer them for you. I mean, it's supposed to be interactive. Um, uh, no, no. Will Shepard. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I do that again? Right, so Will Shepard uh, has posted radioactive duck, question mark, exclamation mark. Yeah, I think it is a radioactive duck, and we better be really careful. Um, it probably does. Um, so, yeah. Uh, George, tell me about some of the challenges of designing a robot for operation in uh, wastewater pipes. In wastewater, I think one of the main issues is uh, sealing the robot, because there's all sorts of nasty, nasty business down there. You don't want to get inside your, your robots, especially the- Really, is there nasty stuff in sewers? I never, yeah, okay, yeah, no, fair enough. All sorts of radioactive- uh, mm, mm. Uh, 
Uh, Brown <laughs> glue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe not full on radiation uh, in that kind of. Uh, yeah. But definitely some. Some brown, brown sticky stuff, stuff and yeah, some, yeah. Some, some white sticking and tangled up in your Yeah, we've all heard about the Fatberg problem and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. And um, to what extent would you say we've tackled that environmental resistance problem thus far within our design over there? Oh, we've definitely made an effort to think about making a future design. We, we definitely have made an effort to think about a future design that will be watertight, definitely. Um, for the moment, we're mostly focusing on just sort of locomotion capabilities, which I will admit weren't quite as impressive today as we had all been hoping. It is. And why are we making why are we making the robot small, George? It's got to get in these really tiny, tight spaces inside the the sewage pipelines. So, like, what, what, what roughly what's the diameter of some of the smaller? You know, like twenty-five mil, like this. Ah, we have an excellent question. Claire Asher asks, I might have missed it, but how would you control lots of these robots simultaneously as a swarm? That is an excellent question, uh, Claire. So, so that suggests that you did notice that we were teleoperating today, which is quite often done in robotics, but to be honest, it's not our intention for these. Ultimately, the whole swarm needs to be autonomous. Um, swarm robotics, by definition, is, is autonomous, uh, uh, you know, a subset of autonomous robotics. There is plenty of processing power on the electronics package in that little robot to give quite high level autonomy. Um, not probably not to do like sort of simultaneous localization and mapping in real time and stuff like that. But um, it's it's going to be sensorized and able to do some some reasonably advanced autonomy. Um, swarm robot autonomy is generally sort of insect level intelligence at you know rather than human level intelligence. <laughs> um, but yeah, because indeed driving them all manually would not be feasible. Um, okay, some guy called Rob Richardson. Um, okay, no, Rob is actually, uh, Rob's my colleague, <laughs> Professor Rob Richardson from the lab. How do you stop the big robot falling over the little ro robots? That's actually a pretty good question. You mean like not, I think he means like not tripping over. How do we stop the little robots from tripping up the big dog? Yeah. Oh, right. I think the dog will just squash the little robots. Yes. I, th I, think, I think the concern would more be for the safety of the little robots were they to. But, but no, so I mean the plan, so the big robots are not powered up at the moment, but it is shown in its sort of deployment pose, crouching down to make it a bit easier. I will put the hand cam back up. Yep, sorry. There we go. There we go. Um, okay, let me hide that one. But yeah, so um, I suppose what we would probably do is have the big robot wait until the little ones have scuttled off into the corners that they're scuttling off into. Um, yeah, so this servo mechanism, which totally works. <laughs> that's how servos sound. Oh, it'll stop now because yeah, it's fantastic. Ground. And then the little ones. And then these little ones will just wander off. Walk off. Um, okay, we've got uh, we've got some more questions. Uh, William Westway asks, "What's the main aim to map, to detect cracks, to unblock, or maybe all?" In the long term, all of those will. Yeah. Um, for the moment, though, the Pipebots team isn't really um, focusing on doing interventions like unblocking. It's more just about pervasive sensing. Um, so uh, uh, mapping is one of the key challenges because, as it stands nobody really knows in much detail what um, the sewer you know, network looks like. There's a lot of missing information, out of date information. Um, so mapping is one of the key things. Um, and then condition monitoring is, I suppose, the more fancy way that we say crack detection and blockage detection. Um, but yeah, those are two of the main, uh, main goals. Thank you. Will. Um, Let's see, what's next? Is there an element of learning in the algorithms? Ah, yes. Right, so so Steve, the algorithms don't really exist yet in terms of assuming you mean the algorithms for the behavior of the robots. We haven't gotten that far with these little guys yet. Um, it's a very good question. I imagine, so one of the other themes of the project based in computing is, is sort of focusing on autonomy. My guess is that for robots of this sort of scale and complexity level, you guys don't have to stare at the camera the whole time. I mean, come on. 
one. Good answer. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, maybe I should talk less um, and let you guys talk. I'm being an awesome. Um, so, so do you think, do you think, George, that uh, we'll do sort of learning on these little robots or more sort of determine the um, behavior beforehand? So what, what could they learn? What do you think? Oh, wait. Um, Yes. So, like offline machine learning could certainly be done over time to do better defect characterization. Yeah. And in terms of feeds that we take back from yeah. machines that we go out through pipes, we can go back and we can learn from that data. When we've got a data set from one pipe, we can compare it against other pipes. pipes. And then basically, the way you do a lot of pipe maintenance is feed those back into a, a massive database of different pipes mm -hmm. looked at different ages. And you compare them against each other to view um, what kind of condition the pipe's in overall. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It, no. It allows you to make Definitely. an informed decision on whether that pipe needs replacing, which is ultimately the, the goal for the pipe. Box. Yeah. And in terms of the sort of low level autonomy of the individual swarm members, I think I would I would imagine that we might do some um, like evolutionary optimization in simulation beforehand but i think once the individual robots are deployed they probably won't be learning in terms of their own behavior what do i spill something that could maybe be burning i don't know um okay but thank you steve um eric asks uh how many robots in the swarm um uh 20. yeah so uh, where's the hand cam get the hand cam out yeah yeah make the hand so cam this big. Is, um the fully working ten aside section, and then this is basically going to be mirrored on the other side of the robot. So there'll be another set of ten robots on this side, and when they are deployed, they'll be deployed either one side at a time, or you can do both at once, depending on if, you, if you're in a large pipe or a smaller area. Because obviously, when the uh, when this mechanism falls out, the, the robot gets a bit wider, so you might want to do both at once. But you could all twenty. Yeah, so I mean, I think there's kind of a question around how many robots does it take to make a swarm, and we sort of felt that 20 was about the minimum where you can legitimately <laughs> call it a swarm. Um, you know, I mean, further down the line, you would hope there'd be hundreds of them. Um, okay, we've got uh, uh, Jason Liu is asking, how will you tackle battery power in pipes? Yeah, good question. Is it a, is a mean question? It is a main question. <laughs> um, basically, we, we're planning to use the, the, dog, the main dog robot as a docking mechanism. So we'll go back and when the little robots run out of battery, they'll go back in here. And uh, basically where they sit, they'll have like little, little cables or rails that they uh, dock into. And then they can all charge from those. Right, so, so it's sort of a mobile charging station type approach that yeah, we're... I mean, that still doesn't solve the whole power issue. You can't really solve that without having a tether that goes all the way down the pipe. Yeah. Um, but basically, if you've got um, these tiny robots, their battery life is going to be like 10, 20 minutes or something if they're running a lot of uh, processing, which we intend to do. So they're going to need to go back and recharge. But this, um, the larger dog robots can hold up to like 10 kilograms, um, which means that we can stack it full of batteries. Yeah. And then essentially drain those batteries and uh, extend our, our lifetime in the pipe. Cool. All right, guys. Um, so it's 25 past, which I think cue our reset and try and do things a little bit more smoothly from the start on the next iteration. Um, so, uh, uh, I mean, you're welcome. Any of you, you're welcome to stay for the, for the next one, but it's going to be basically showing you the same things, just maybe a little tiny bit smoother. The pulse connection will time out in 14 extent. Um, so you're welcome to stay if you want. I wouldn't particularly expect you to. Um, I'm just going to turn the cameras off while we just try and um, <clears throat> configure a few bits of uh, hardware a little bit. And uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, and yeah, thanks for bearing with us through a slightly rocky first run through. Uh, cheers for now.
Adding to stream. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome. Welcome to the Real Robotics Lab uh, for the second run through today of our uh, completely flawless demo uh, of our little miniature robots that have been designed um, for accessing hard to access places. So I'm joined uh, today by uh, Nick uh, Castledine and George Jackson Mills, uh, doctors in both cases, um, postdocs working in the lab here. Um, and yeah, you want to just quickly introduce yourselves and say a little bit about the projects that you're representing? Yeah. Thank you, George. Yep. Think he does. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm George. I work on Packbox, which is a project to use miniature robots to investigate the water and waste uh, water network in the UK, looking for defects and replacement of uh, existing pipes. Cool. And you, Nick? Yes, I'd love to. Uh, hi, I'm Nick. Uh, I'm working on the Rain project, uh, which is robots and AI in nuclear. Um, so it's looking at uh, nuclear robotic solutions to kind of aid the decommissioning of uh, nuclear sites uh, around the UK and around the world, in fact. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's sort of part of generally a lot of what we do here in the Real Robotics Lab is sort of essentially inspection robots, um, robots for inspecting things where people can't easily go, don't want to go, uh, stuff like that. So shall we start, uh, Nick, with uh, with PyBear? Yes. Um, let us enable hand the hand cam. Cam. Uh, George, uh, George, you want to operate, operate, operate VR, VR hand, hand, hand cam operator? operator. Let's, Let's make, make that the big, big one. one. Okay, okay, so, so Nick, tell, tell us a little bit about the, the uh, prototype, prototype that, that we're seeing over, over there. there. Okay, yeah, so this is a uh, pipe crawling robot. It's designed to move through two inch bore pipes. Um, at the Sellafield nuclear site, there's uh, quite a lot of uh, two inch bore pipe, which they're kind of not sure the condition of the pipe. Um, it's kind of been flushed with nitric acid. Uh, it's no longer used for like, um, reactor purposes, uh, but they don't know how radioactive the pipes are. So they have a requirement to send the robot into these pipe networks with a uh, radiation sensor attached. <laughs> and it kind of goes through and measures how radioactive certain things of pipe are and reports that information back so it can be safely disposed of. So this is a, it's known as a wall press style robot. So there's six wheels on the robot, um, there's three at the front and three at the back. And uh, each wheel is driven by a very small DC motor. Um, these arms are sprung outwards just using the elastic bands, uh, which press the wheels against the wall and help it gain traction. Uh, they can pull quite a, quite it's quite a small a robot, Nick. Where did you mount the motors to, to fit six of them for those six wheels? So, yeah, the motors are actually embedded within these arms. Mm, um, okay. So the, most of the premise of the robot is designed around the motors. Uh, so yeah. it's very hard to find commercially available motors on this scale. That's one of the biggest challenges about designing robots in a scale environment. Yeah. Is the size constraints and like, the mobility through the pipes. Um, uh, to be able to get it to move through around 90 degree bends and around T sections, uh, which robots on the scale can't currently do. Yeah. Um, it's quite a large challenge. I will just say for anyone who was wondering, um, um, so, so I mean, it's still, still prototype, prototype stage, stage so, so we haven't yet tackled things like radiation resistance and, you know, nitric acid resistance. But now we're both basically just sort of worrying about the, the, the mechanical setup. Um, what's that strange uh, silver protrusion on the front of the robot there, Nick? So this is a feeler. So as it approaches a corner or a T-section, the robot will angle itself so that the feeler goes in the direction that it wants to navigate towards. Um, so the feeler effectively helps uh, pull the robots around the corner, uh, kind of making it easier to traverse around. Uh, and is it like a sensor or something? Or, or? No, it's just a, it's just a passive uh, spring for right. the ball bearing. So it's, it's just kind of twice. So exploiting good old <laughs> mechanical intelligence, as they yes, sometimes say. Yeah. 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 Cool. cool. Well, well um, you will see, everybody, that we have a very small pipe network over there, strapped to the edge of the table. Um, and while this pipe network happens to be made of uh, transparent um, plastic, we do have uh, a bit of the pipe at the end there, um, which we don't know what's in it. Um, it's, it's not transparent. We cannot see into it. It looks dangerous, Jordan. It does. It does. It's that red and white stripy tape that makes it look dangerous, I don't isn't it? Anywhere near it. Yeah, I, I, it could be radioactive, George. I would definitely suggest not 
approaching it. I think we should send a robot, because robots aren't as easily damaged by radiation as us humans. Yeah, and when they are, you can just throw them away sure without I feeling too bad. Okay, which of the many cameras shall we use here? All right, I'm going to temporarily remove the top-down view from the stream. Okay, so as you can see there, uh, okay, I'm going to make the, um, the hand cam is the big view. So there you can see the wall press mechanism, you know, uh, uh, being sort of um, compressed a bit by the pipe, uh, getting nice grip there. Um, and, yep, it goes forwards and it goes backwards. What are you driving it with now? I'm uh, just using an Xbox controller. Cool. So it's quite Good a choice. Already, and uh, it's quite easy to integrate into the system. Uh, the feeler's fallen off. Oh, the feeler's fallen off. Cool. Cool. Um, <laughs> okay, observe as, uh, as Nick uses the um, high tech feeler extraction tool. Yes, you can do it. Oh, uh, we pushing it robot. further in. <laughs> I'm just going to send it. You can send a robot in to retreat. I'm not sure, yeah, yeah you, you're just going to say, okay, okay, cool, cool, he's a brave, brave fellow, there we go, so that's, uh, so we made it past the debris of the feeler, did we, or are we just pushing it along with us? So I wonder, um, I mean, this is actually an interesting test for us, we've never really tried to take a corner without the feeler. Let's see if it works at all. My guess is probably not. That's why we added the feeler. Oh, don't. Oh, that sound. The gears grinding. Just back it out, Nick. Back it out. Maybe we'll recover the feeler as the robot comes out. Yeah, that is excellent confirmation that the feeler works. Because, yeah, you haven't seen it with the feeler yet, but. Um, just back it up, Nick. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure we can reattach the feeler. Of course. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, I really shouldn't have taped that pipe down so firmly, should I? Oh, and we've lost pipe air cam. Oh, okay. And we've lost a little shaft out of. Where was it? Well, you see, this is why um, robots need to go through like a few design iterations and refinements before the regulator will let us deploy it on the real on the real Sellafield site. They're very sensible. They're very sensible in not, not trusting us additionally. This is low TRL stuff, part of the process. Okay, well let's leave that for the moment, guys. And why don't we move swiftly on uh, to Pipebots. How do I want to arrange the pictures here? Okay. Okay, cool. So we've got uh, George. George. Hi. Why, why don't you just tell us a little bit, bit uh, sort of abstractly about the, you know, the high level plan. What are people seeing there? And how does this tie into the long term Pipebots vision? Right. So basically, Pipe bots, there's many different sizes of pipes that we need to explore, with, with, some with miniature robots and some with large robots. So the idea here is to combine the two different sizes. We can send a large walking dog robot uh, from Unitary Robotics, we didn't make that one, and we yeah, send it down a shell. huge pipe uh, with a load of tiny robots on its back, marsupial style. Indeed. Here they are. And what does one sort of generally in the field call a, a cooperative team of multiple robots? Uh, they call it a swarm, or but a heterogeneous swarm? Yeah, I suppose it's arguably a heterogeneous swarm if you count the, the deploying robot as part of it. A lot of, of people yeah. do, because they say it's cheating. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's not, I think it's... I mean, it is cheating, in a way. <laughs> Using technology at all is cheating. We should really still just be trying to catch insects with our fingers and eat them. <laughs> That's exactly what I was suggesting, George. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, the, the, ro the robot dog walks down the pipe and it basically releases this swarm when you get to a, uh, a hard to reach area. Yeah, let, let Nick hold the microphone for you, George. That is the plan. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Um, right, you ready? The, my servos are going to turn on now, and it's going to just deploy the swarm. The servos aren't working today. Yep, uh, George was totally not actually doing that with his hand. He was just deployed. You know, on it. Right, and now these little this little robots just just squeak off, <laughs> and they all get deployed in the pipe, and they aren't connected to a computer, so they aren't moving on their own. Cool. And then the, uh, the servos roll. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Should have stood back. <laughs> 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 the puppets, guys. <laughs> That's valuable experiments we're doing here. Yeah. Now we know much more. And he goes back up here, and then they go off to another hard to reach area and deploy more swarm robots. Wow. Cool. And then basically, this is half of the design. So on the full design, there's going to be uh, this whole section again mirrored on the other side. And it will hold a total of 20 robots. Okay, That's nice. Right, 20. So that little one at the front there looks like it kind of wants to have a go at the, at the pipe there. More so than this one. Yes. That one. Go! Okay, so um, we literally finished putting the first one of these together at about 2 o'clock today. So um, there is a little bit of room for improvement, certainly. Um, for example, we noticed that the poor thing was rather top heavy. Uh, and kept rolling over backwards when it tried to do like a five degree ramp so we had to add that tail on the back. It's a scientifically engineered piece of sheet metal attached with super glue. Um, but overall, I mean, I think with a little bit more, we, we've learned quite a lot in fact just from, from the testing of this one today. Um, but basically there are various swarm robotic platforms available, but none of them really have the sort of um, locomotion capabilities required to do um, you know, sort of real world outdoor type stuff. And I'll be honest, this one sure as hell doesn't yet. But um, we just need to iron out a few of the, uh, the, the little kinks. Um, yeah, what, 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 what's the um, locomotion mechanism of, uh, of these robots sort of generally called in the vernacular of the field, George? So these are uh, wheel legs or wegs for short. See? So it's like a, a circular sort of profile, but it's got spokes. The idea is that the spokes like you get over obstacles that are just a little bit um, higher than you would be able to get over with wheels. Yeah. Right, yeah, while still being as simple to control just uh, as wheels, you know, just one degree of freedom, just turn the axle kind of thing. Yeah, it's still like skid steer. Cool. Okay, well, yeah, no, uh, brilliant. Um, so that brings us roughly to um, Q&A time. Um, do we have anybody in the audience, full stop, <laughs> and would any of said people uh, like to ask us any questions? questions? George and Nico, you guys, they're, they're look, they're, we're trying to read the questions. Right, I will, I will put those up. Um, so, so we do know that there's a little bit of lag in the whole stream thing. So maybe the questions are going to come flooding in in a moment, just in case they don't. Um, so, uh, yeah, guys, why don't you sort of tell us a little bit about some of the manufacturing approaches that we've been using recently for uh, making small scale robots? Okay. Um, so yeah, the quality of my robots is made from uh, this 3D printed. Um, it's 3D printed using a uh, basically based materials. Um, so it's, uh, it's quite easy to get apart from the geometry, um, and it's also quite light work, some robust at the same time. Um, it's quite fast, it's patient time as well, when you like, do those typing, you can get uh, iterations within like, a week of like, giving a new design. So, so quite fast process. So then like, like further down the line with your robot, is, like does it need to be able, are, are, we, are we particularly concerned about sort of long-term longevity? Is it going to be reused many times, or what? So because the robot's designed to be used in a nuclear environment, so we anticipate it's probably going to be a single-use robot. Right. Okay. Uh, so it'll be used one time to go into one pipe network. Um, it'll map the radiation within that pipe network, and then it'll be retrieved and then disposed of. Right. Uh, because it's quite a high chance of uh, radioactive contaminants within the pipe. Of course. Um, which can be quite nasty. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, radiation uh, is not friendly to electronics, to all yeah. the scientists. Um, so it's just kind of easier and cheaper to kind of dispose of the robots and uh, start to get them from scratch. Right. Find work. Hence using sort of plasticky type parts and stuff. I mean, I suppose, I think, you know, further down the line, one would probably stop using 3D printing and instead yes. look at like injection molding or something yeah. like that to replicate yeah, the, the then what about uh, Swarm Trooper, George? Uh, Swarm Trooper has a 3D printed shell, which is the same material as Nix, but this is just holding basically all of the electronics inside. Um, Why don't you move across to the <coughs> real one? Metal uh, base, and basically this is a stainless steel all uh, sheet material that's been cut and then welded together, and this is a part of our effort to seal the robot completely against uh, any contamination. The astute viewer house. will notice that it is currently not 100% sealed at the bottom there, is it? No, because this is a prototype, we <laughs> need to access the gears in case anything yeah. goes wrong. Which it rarely does, rarely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only, only once or twice, twice today. today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've got, uh, my, you can see a micro metal mo uh, motor in there, so that's a really uh, high gear ratio. Tiny, tiny precision motor. That isn't actually a micro metal. That's a sub micro plastic here. <laughs> but yes, no. Commercially available, very nice, quite cheap. Um, also. On micro scale, that's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. Six millimeter diameter, I think, those little yeah. motors. Yeah. Uh, basically, by assembling it in sheet metal like this, we can get uh, a really, really strong robot, a structural uh, robot that will be able to survive. Small, uh, rough, rough terrain, rough, rough life. life. <laughs> it's a rough life for a sewer robot. Yeah. Yep. Um, I really, I had not realized just how much like Thomas, reminiscent of Thomas the Tank Engine, it is when viewed from the front. I'm not you quite know, sure why. A lot of our robots turn out that way. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't intentional. <laughs> oh, we have a question! Yay! Okay, we have a question. question. Allow, Allow me to put it on, it on screen, screen and switch back. back. What kind of connectivity does or will the pipe pod have, particularly considering the environment inside a pipe? That is a very good question, and one that, to be fair, us three aren't the optimal ones to answer because, as part of this project, there's um, so we are the mechanical engineering theme, mostly looking at the physical platforms. Um, we've got some folks in the Lekenge focusing on the connectivity type stuff. Uh, jo George, do you feel happy giving a answer to that? Not really. <laughs> okay, I'll bring it. So, yes. So, um, standard wireless comms, you know, the sort of 3G and Wi Fi and stuff like that, do not work well at all in buried pipes. Um, I don't fully understand the physics behind why not, but it's something about, you know, different, um, uh, uh, the, the, the waves like bounce differently off, off the pipe walls and stuff like that. So, um, for uh, a relatively low bandwidth communication, uh, one of our themes is looking at alternative lower frequency RF me methods that, that might work, should work. Um, and then there are also options, of course, much lower bandwidth, but you can use um, uh, visible light or infrared light um, for communication, as well as sound, in fact, uh, sort of like old fashioned modems, essentially. Um, yeah, so ultimately the plan is that the individual robots will be able to sort of form ad hoc networks um, and sort of pass information between each other and onwards to base camp. Um, strangely, I saw that Will posted a question as an email. Just the little notification, notification came up. Sorry, Will, it'll need to be in a YouTube comment for my brain to be able to deal with it right now. Um, yeah, okay, so uh, so uh, I hope that was a, a satisfactory answer to your question. Um, yeah, tell us a little bit about the uh, electronics package on Swarm Trooper there. Um, yes, Andy, why don't you tell us? <laughs> So we've actually, for this one, uh, we've got a simplified electronics package. It's got a simple microprocessor on it. 
and uh, with Wi-Fi built onto it, that's how I've been controlling it from the corner. And what we're planning to do is add a second uh, processor to it to do all the, uh, you know, the um, analysis of the mm -hmm. photo of the Sensor images. Data. Um, it actually does have a small camera poking out at the top there, if you can see. So, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things we've yet to do is uh, improve the um, range finders on the front so that it can yeah, find its way around. It right, so it's going to have like proximity sensing for the sort of low level. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I think that's most of it. Most yeah. of it, the rest of it is like most controller, uh, yeah. battery management, power management. And we anticipate that it's still going to fit in that same shell with the extra processor. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. It's, uh, the extra processor will be on on the there's a companion board that fits yeah. underneath the other main processor. So uh, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. The other thing is I could probably mention a little bit about the wireless communication. Yeah, yes, please, do. please do. One of the other reasons for having the swarm is to actually act as relays. So that each one can act as a relay station down the pipe, mm, like a bucket brigade a kind bucket of brigade yeah. kind of thing. So that's yeah, exactly. That's one of the one of the, <laughs> that's one of the concepts that we're we're playing with the idea of. But it's also the the frequencies. Um, yeah. The standard two point four gigahertz. Uh, it's terrible. Is, you know, only three or four meters range in a pipe. So I mean, to be fair with what you were saying about the sort of the sensor, the, uh, sorry, the, the communications network formed of individual robots, three meters could be enough. Yeah, with, it could be enough for a, you know examining one both pipe. Yeah. Certainly, and then potentially we could pick more back up again and yeah. go move on to somewhere else. But I mean, a lot of it will be based from one manhole to another, so that's the, the range that we're going to be working with, which is typically about no more than about 50 meters. Right. So okay. that's generally the, the distance we're going to be working with. Cool, thank you. Yeah, I, I think like the getting all of the electronics into little little robots like this is, is in fact one of the uh, one of the trickiest bits. Yeah. Um right, well, uh if anyone has any further questions, please ask them uh now. Otherwise, um we will soon just be going offline for five minutes to reset, reboot for the next run through, which will start um on the hour um but yeah thank you very much um for coming and uh, uh listening and sorry uh it's all been slightly um slightly unpolished today um and, and thank you very much inmo for uh your question so that at least we knew i'm very happy to do the whole spiel for one person doing it for literally nobody would be disappointing <laughs> <laughs> So with that, um, we will say goodbye for the moment uh, to this cohort, and we'll be back uh, at five o'clock to run through it again for anyone who wants to see it again, which I bet you don't. Okay, <laughs> bye for now. Bye. <laughs> bye.
Okay, hello, uh, everybody. Very um, happy afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon to you. Sorry, I'm tying myself in knots now. Um, and welcome to the Real Robotics Lab. Um, I'm joined by uh, Andy, Nick, and George. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm Jordan Boyle. Um, and we're going to show you two small robot prototypes today. Um, both of which have been designed for accessing hard to access, you know, confined spaces. Um, do you, shall we start just with, uh, do you want to just say a sentence or two about what you do? Start with Definitely. George. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm George. I work on Pipebox, which is a uh, project to build uh, robots that can work on the ground. So it's a clean water and wastewater systems across the UK. We're looking for defects. Like to, to uh, hi, I'm Nick. I'm working on the uh, the Bain project, which is robots and AI in nuclear. And we're looking for robotic solutions to assist in the, uh, in the nuclear industry to uh, keep people out of harm's way. Cool, thank you all. And I have just realized that you probably couldn't hear any of that well at all because I hadn't added the hand cam to the screen. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Anyway, anyway, moving swiftly on. Moving swiftly on. Um, so, shall we start with a demonstration of our Pi Bear prototype? Of course, yes. So let's let's do that. That is your face. Indeed. Yep. Yep. That's George. Oh, I'll make the hand cam the big one. Whoa. Yeah, what have you got there, Nick? Tell us. Tell okay, us. yeah, so this is the robot I've been working on. Um, it's designed for use within two inch bore pipes, uh, specifically two inch bore pipes up on the Sutterfield site. Um, as they have lots of pipe up there, which they're not quite sure what's in it. They don't know how radioactive it is, they don't know what contaminants up there. So it kind of makes the whole decommissioning process, uh, removing a section of pipes and disposing of them safely quite difficult. So the aim of this robot is it's going to go into the pipes. Uh, there's going to be a radiation sensor attached behind it. Uh, it's going to move through the length of the pipe, detecting how radioactive the pipe is, and it'll report that back to the base station so people then know how to safely dispose of that pipe. Uh, there's also a camera on the front, it's a very tiny camera. I think we have a feed for that. Oh, wow, that so we, we do have see. a feed for that. Let me enable the feed for that. There we go. So this allows us to see if there's any blockages in the pipe, if there's any damage to the inside of the walls, or uh, any kind of like um, areas of like flushing material or yeah. So it's worth noting that this is a fairly early stage low TRL prototype that is mainly aimed to assess and develop the locomotion capability of this robot. Um, so it doesn't have a radiation sensor on it yet and uh, we haven't worried about radiation um, hardening and stuff like that yet. Um, and also maybe worth noting that it's it's uh, sort of ultimately being designed as a disposable type thing. Yeah, Nick? Yes, so it's uh, designed to be a single-use robot uh, as it's going into a, a, a nuclear highly contaminated, which could be highly contaminated uh, with uh, radioactive materials. Um, and that does not play nicely with electronics. It's got a habit of uh, destroying them very quickly. And also wheels and the actual chassis of the robot itself might pick up radioactive contaminants. Yeah, it would be very hard to decontaminate. Really. Um, so it's designed to be kind of as cheap as possible, so we can put it into the pipe, we can pull it out and just dispose of it and use a new robot for the, the next pipe run. Yeah. So it's a, uh, the type of robot, it's a, a wall vest design. Um, so there's six wheels on each one of these robots. Um, and each robot is driven by a very small DC motor, uh, so I, which is... He means each wheel. Can you get yeah. the, the wheels again? Yeah, we were saying. So the arms with the wheels on are actuated outwards, they're sprung outwards. Um, so this provides a traction of the wheel against the pipe wall itself. Uh, it can, allows it quite substantial traction. Uh, and to be fair, this aspect isn't working right now, but we've got, we're, we're going to be able to actively retract the arms to help get around. Helps it move around the T sections and 90 degree bends and things like that, which uh, robots on the scale currently can't do. Um, so that's kind of how a robot is not on the sense of other kind of pipe robots on the scale. Well, so shall we uh, uh, seek out the proof in the pudding at this point, Nick? We shall. Okay, so what cameras have we got? Yeah. Cool, we got the hand cam big. So what we have here is um, a 
very small pipe network of a realistic diameter for the application that we're interested in, um, but not a realistic material. Um, we've chosen to go with clear acrylic here, basically, so that we can see what's going on inside. Um, but you may notice, show us, George, the uh, 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 mystery area oh, at the end of the pipe. Danger zone. It is a potentially dangerous zone there. That's what the uh, red and white striped tape always means, is danger. Um, so we have no idea, not a clue, what is hiding in the pipe there. Could it be a monster, could be a radioactive sludge, could be gold. Um, we're gonna send the robot in and go try to find out. Oh yeah. So let's make the uh, robot's eye view. Okay, no, currently we're just seeing down the back. We'll leave the uh, hand cam as the big view. So yeah, um, thanks to the wall, wall press mechanism, um, you know, we've got good friction against the pipe walls. Going just down a straight piece of pipe is easy. Um, the trick is when you get to corners and such like, and that is where, um, ooh, oh, the grinding of the gears. That is where a tiny bit of further improvement is probably required. Um, come on. Come on. Come on, Pipe, you can do it. So, so you know, I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be interesting for you guys if it worked first time, every time. Of course. What? What's it? What's it snagging on? I think it's the camera. The camera, of course. <laughs> um. Earlier, Talad asks, do robots tend to get stuck in such situation? Yeah, yeah very good question. Um, basically, they need to not get stuck in that situation, which is why, which is why we definitely still have some way to go in terms of um, future reliability. That said, there is one actual thing, legitimate reason why it's struggling a little bit here. So, so the plastic pipe that we're using here has like push fit connections which means on the inside, after that corner, there's a, there, there's a lip. Um, oh no, we've lost a wheel! Have we? We have! Um, yeah. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Oh, but notice, notice how um, the graceful degradation of this design. We have, it turns out, lost a wheel in the pipe. That's cool, that's cool. With five out of the six wheels, we were still able to do a, 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 a return to base maneuver, no, no problem at all. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, good question about the reliability there. I mean, essentially, this is why you have to do a hell of a lot of lab testing um, before you try to do a real world deployment. Don't worry, that's fine. Um, we will have a spare. We have a spare for the for the final run. But why don't we um, why don't we move on? From that 100% test test on demo we just had, and let's let's have a little look at pipe pods and our swarm trooper prototype. Wow. Over to you, George. Hello. So this is the pipe pod swarm trooper prototype design, and this is basically a mixture of large and small robotics to uh, investigate different types, different sizes of pipes. So we're going to get this big walking robot dog, which we didn't build. Um, we, we, bought bought it. we bought this one. It's very it's nice, cool. very cool. And he can walk down big pipes um, up to like half a meter maybe. And on top of the robot dog there is a, a swarm of ten different flashy robots which then will be deployed when we find a, uh, a pipe small enough that we can need to inspect it but the robot dog won't fit. So basically we now we deploy the pipes Pipe robots, go! With the servos. Yeah, yeah. That, was and that was totally the sound, the sound of the actual, actual mechanism, mechanism, George. George totally wasn't, wasn't just, just lowering it with his hand, hand because <laughs> we put it together an hour and a half ago and it didn't work. <laughs> the robots are now deployed and the robots are going to walk off in a swarm, a non squeaky swarm. Go, robots! <laughs> <laughs> the astute viewer may notice that some of those robots are not 100% functional. <laughs> um, <laughs> but one of them is! Some of them are! So the robots are now deployed. Let's, let's explore this... Uh, this let's explore this piece of sewer, sewer, sewer pipe, pipe over here, shall we? Yeah, dirty, dirty pipe. 
There we go. So, um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, re we really did put this together and test it like today. It was uh, to the wire. Um, you may notice we had to do a last minute modification adding a tail um, to the back because uh, our poor little robot ended up being rather more top heavy than we had envisioned and so it just rolled over backwards when we tried to drive up the slope. Um, but, you know, I think, I think the, the current tail is maybe not entirely optimized, um, but I do think a tail can often do really good things for a robot's locomotion, um, just like uh, uh, for animals. Um, yeah, yeah, tails can uh, add stability, help you with climbing over things and all sorts. But yeah, so as you can see, it's some work is still required, but it's got quite capable locomotion for such a small robot. And also, the astute viewer might have guessed, maybe at this point, that there's some teleoperation going on right now. Um, but the electronics payload on these robots is comfortably enough to um, to do you know, autonomous control, autonomous behavior, and ultimately for swarm um, deployments, it kind of has to be that way. Um, but yeah, no, so that uh, uh, now that we've added the stabilizing tail, um, it's pretty decent um, locomotion capabilities, some room for improvement, but um, uh, certainly uh, uh, more capable of real world operation than most swarm platforms. Um, I noticed that the other robots, while we weren't looking, moved into position. Well, when did that happen? Whoa! <laughs> Bad, bad editing on my part. Oh. I, I think they're, I think they're kind of shy, and they don't want to move when the camera is looking they at them. Autonomously explored this pipe while we weren't looking. They have completely, one hundred percent, autonomously explored that pipe while you weren't looking. Unbelievable. Yep. And now that you're looking, they're freezing because they're scared. Bit shy. Bit shy. Yeah. Okie dokie, folks. Um, boy, I'm running out of steam. Um, <laughs> so. Will be so there will be. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, through. Through. Um, so yeah. So so that kind of gives you a sense of the um, the long term vision here with the uh, heterogeneous swarm marsupial approach. Um, because of course tiny little robots can't move very fast. Stuff like that. Um, big robots can much more easily cover longer distances. So the notion of using large robots to deploy small robots into areas that the big one can't get into is, I think, quite interesting. And this marsupial design, it's, uh, it's pretty rare, and no one's ever done this with a robot dog before, especially with the miniature robots on this scale. Yeah, I'm willing, yeah. I, th I think that, that, that is quite possibly that is true. true. And uh, basically, there's going to be there's 10 robots that have been deployed on this side, and then they've gone off and explored the pipe. But in the end, we're going to have a mirror of this mechanism, mm -hmm. and there's going to be <coughs> another 10 on the other side. So it's 20, 20 robots on one dog, and uh, they'll all be deployed at once, yeah. or one side at a time, if it's a smaller pipe. Yeah. yeah. Allowing for a full swarm to just come pouring out. And I mean, I think to be fair, there is some room for optimization in the deployment mechanism such that we could do more than 20 at some point. In the future. Yeah, you could have like a carousel kind of Ferris wheel. Yeah, Pez dispenser. Pez dispenser. All, all sorts of options. You put them in a bucket and just <laughs> Yeah, <them. laughs> just pull them out. I mean, once, once they're robust, they're robust enough, enough that's, that's actually, actually probably a pretty, a pretty good, good, way good way to go. go. Yeah, and that's why they've gone with the full metal design. So they're going to be pretty robust in the end. We'll just chuck them and they'll, uh, they'll wander off. Yeah. yeah. When, when you, you say, say full metal, metal design, design, you don't actually mean full metal design, do you? I don't, because half of it's not metal. The but bottom half is the, the business, business end. end. The, the um, end. yeah, 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 yeah. The sort of the mechanical part we've uh, made out of laser cut metal sheet. Yep. Yeah. Um, stainless, and uh, basically it's uh, our effort to weld together a uh, very structurally sound and sealed robot. As you can see, this robot would not allow any any kind of waste or debris inside. And the gears are completely, uh, completely, completely covered. Completely, completely covered. Yeah. yeah. No those wheels on there, George. Uh, these aren't wheels, Nick. Good Have you question. heard the, of, of Wegs, <laughs> the new thing? Whoa. You tell me more. So, these are a uh, wheel legs. Wow. So basically, they're uh, they're sort of a circular profile, right? But with loads cut away. So you've got three mm. spikes. You can have different numbers, like four or five. 
And the basic idea is that instead of wheels which are perfectly round and you just kind of bump up your obstacle, these kind of have hooks and teeth on the end and they can climb and crawl their way up, which allows them to uh, move over obstacles that it's are... A bit of steer climbing, climbing capabilities. capabilities yeah, yeah, like a bit that. of yeah. A climbing ability versus a, a wheel design. While, while still, still being just, just as simple as a wheel, wheel to actuate, it, it's just, just one, one degree of freedom per, per unit. And they also look a lot cooler. They, they do, do really look quite a lot cooler. cooler. I have a feeling if you fitted wigs on your car, there might be some downsides in terms of ride quality, might there? I think we would have to implement some form of suspension if we scaled this up to a car car size design, Jordan. I can try this now, actually. It's terrifying. Yeah. It might be alright on the beach. We could beg on Yeah. Yeah, that would be interesting. So, um, so we can certainly, and we will, if necessary, keep talking. Um, but I would be absolutely delighted if anyone in our audience was able to, uh, interested in willing to put forward some questions for the team to answer, um, to guide our otherwise aimless talking. Um, the Hamlin Symposium, uh, uh, said great sound effects, by the way, I agree. I think, I mean really, I think there's quite a lot of benefit in adding sound effects to your robots to make them sound more or less intimidating, you know, depending on the... Yeah. 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 I like that sort of weird bassy modem sound that the ones in like the later Terminator movies made. That, that's, that's when you know a robot means business. I don't think we're quite there yet for the bassy robot. Uh, Terminator size sounds. No, no, no. our little, our sweet little robots are probably not, um, not that intimidating. Um, okay, well, no, no questions have flooded in yet. I'm waiting for the, for the, for the I mean, the inevitable flood of questions. We will brace ourselves for that. Um, George, <laughs> in this He's ready for those questions. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Any second now. <laughs> any second now. Um, oh, here's one that was missed earlier. Yeah, sorry. What is the max speed of WIG robots? And how long the operation for one charge battery? That's a good question. Put it to max, Andy. Put it to max. Put it to max. It is max. It's only got one. It's, it's always been max. max. You, you just saw its, its max speed in its current iteration. But I mean, you know, generally you don't want to go like too fast. Oh, we're going to have an experiment. Okay. 50, 50 so it's easier max. Yeah. Right, starting Go. Five. Okay, so that's about five seconds per no, no, half a meter. meter. That was maybe ten seconds. Just that was eleven seconds, right? Wow. Now put it to max speed, Andy. That is max speed. So pretty, pretty, pretty fast. I mean, there's all sorts of optimization that could be done there. Essentially, it's always a trade-off between speed and torque. Um, if we oh, ultimately oh, find, <laughs> there we go. How fast was that? What's that? Half a meter. In. Okay. Well, the complete absence of questions coming in makes me think that um, we will, at this point, close this second last run through of our demo. Um, so we will go offline for uh, ten minutes, uh, and then we will come back and do it one last time. Um, I'm sure you're waiting to see that last time. We saved all the best stuff for the last one, actually. We've got like eight more robots that we're going to bring out just for the last one. Um, so thank you, guys. Thank you, audience. Um, and yeah, we will be back soon.
cameras. Three cameras. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Real Robotics Lab at the University of Leeds um, for our final run through of our demo today. Um, I'm Jordan Boyle, and allow my team to introduce themselves starting on the Windows side. Hello, I'm George. I work on the Packbox project, which is a project to use miniature robots to investigate. Water, clean water and wastewater pipe network here within the UK. We're looking for defects and all sorts of nasty, uh, nasty things. <laughs> With a view to better maintaining our to fix infrastructure. Them. Yes. Nick. Hi, uh, my name's Nick. I'm working on the RAIN project, which is robots and AI in nuclear. Uh, we're aiming to provide robotic solutions to the nuclear industry to kind of keep people out of harm's way in radioactive environments. And finally, it's me, I'm Andy Blight. Uh, I also work on the Pipebox project, so thanks for the intro, George. Uh, most of the work I do is to do with the software and some of the electronics as well. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, Andy is our software wizard, and he will also at one point be disappearing off screen to do some uh, teleoperation of one of our robots, which is not <laughs> quite yet autonomous. Um, so, I, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, the afternoon's demos have um, taken their toll on the team. I'm quite tired, um, but more <laughs> significantly on one of the robots, um, which is slightly taking some strain. But let us have a look at it and uh, see what's going on. Oh, poor Piper. Okay, yeah, so this is the, uh, the Pi Bear robot. It's designed to traverse through two inch of more Pi pipe works. Um, it's a wall press design, so by that I mean that the wheels are uh, sprung outwards, pressing into the walls, uh, which is how the robot gets its traction. Um, on each robot, there's six wheels, each with its own motor. Uh, it seems a very tiny. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was one um, and each rotor has a diameter of six millimeters, which is the kind of smallest one that you can buy commercially. Um, Those are quite unusual looking wheels, Nick, very skinny. What are they? Yeah, they're actually Dremel discs, um, because I, I started this project during lockdown, and uh, a lot of the work was done at home. And I utilized a lot of things that I had just laying around in my home workshop, and Dremel discs being one of them. I found that they actually gave quite a lot of friction against the pipe walls, so it kind of stuck with them for the time being. Yeah, they're really good for like, Cutting through gunk Slice is our theory. Gunk yeah. And, uh, radioactive materials uh, that we might encounter in these, uh, these nuclear pipes. So is that the is that the version that's that's taken some strain today? Is that the one that's missing a wheel, or have we uh, swapped? The wheel has been reattached. Oh, the wheel's uh, been reattached. It's not engaged. Uh, oh, okay. We need some washers to. Okay, no, no, no. That's great. So yeah. Uh, so shall we see if it can handle a pipe with five out of six wheel drive? Yeah, I tell you what. Let's try. Yeah, yeah go on. Pipe. Pipe <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that is um, a small, small pipe network, network we have set up in the lab, in the lab here. Um, the, the diameter, diameter is correct. correct. It's uh, the two inch bore that, uh, that we're really aiming these robots at. Uh, but of course, the real pipes are stainless steel. You can't see through them. Um, so we've just chosen clear acrylic for ease of testing and experimentation. I hear a robot working. So yeah, you can see we have uh, five out of six wheels working here. Unfortunately, there's one out of action. I'm um, sure that's enough. Yeah, so I'm confident we can do it with that. Uh, me too. Is the camera feed working? It is? Oh, oh, from the robot? No, yeah. it doesn't matter. It says disconnected. Yeah, yeah we, we do have a camera on the robot, but it's uh, being troublesome. What's that dongle on the front end? So that tongue on the front is uh, actually a feeler. Mm. So the intent of that is that it's a passive feeler. Um, so as it gets towards a corner or a, a T-section, it will hopefully help guide the robot around. But judging by its performance today, we'll, we'll see. Well, let, let's try it anyway. Yeah. It was when attempting this corner last time is when Ooh. when we lost that wheel. Oh, the creaking. The creaking makes me very nervous. So, well, so, unsurprisingly, doing straight runs of pipe is, is the easiest bit. Corners, Corners sharp, sharp 90, 90 degree minutes like this are quite tricky. tricky. Um, I mean, of course, Sod's Law, it's, it's 
done the corners successfully multiple times in the past. And of course, uh, uh, you know, when we're streaming on YouTube, wheels break off and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the basic idea is that because we have separate motors for each of the wheels, we can do sort of differential drive to kind of change the orientation of the robot in the, uh, in the pipe. And then the, uh, the mechanical feeler on the front is uh, also sort of helping to kind of pull it around uh, around the corner. But um, some room for improvement, obviously. Definitely, yes. Um, yeah, locally, locally. Um, shall we switch across to the uh, other, other robot that we have to show you guys today? Here's the other robot. It's the Pipebot, marsupial robot. It's a unitary robotic dog with a swarm of 10 miniature Pipebots uh, attached on top. Here they are, blinking, all ready to go. Beautiful. They're beautiful. We didn't create the robot dog, um, but we did build all these tiny, tiny robots. And the basic idea of this system is that the, the robot dog can walk the tiny robots to the uh, the hard to access spaces through the larger bore entrances of the, the larger pipes and we find smaller pipes that it can't access and then we deploy an entire swarm of robots that will go and investigate for us. So why don't we why don't we just deploy the swarm right now? Let's do it. Ready? I'm ready. I'm turning it on. <laughs> George's hand, of course, is just there so he can sort of feel any vibrations in the system. He is definitely not actually lowering it manually um, because the deployment mechanism definitely didn't actually only, you know, get assembled half an hour before the first demo and, and, and not work. Um, and he's definitely not manually moving those little robots off the deployment mechanism because they definitely all work. All in working order. Folks. All in working order. They're all um, teleoperated um, by me. Yes. And my hands. <laughs> but let's uh, let's get a zoom in on uh, on on the one in the leader there. Yeah, they're now ready to investigate our uh, our hard to access uh, space, which clearly you couldn't fit a robot dog in. It's no. a tiny sewer pipe. You can tell by the way it's pristine. <laughs> yeah, <trust me>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what, what all sewer pipes, pipes look like, like actually. Here oh, he there goes. goes. Look at that cute little robot. Oh, oh, it's not oh. oh, the poor thing. Initiate the uh, self writing mechanism there, guys. There we go. Some, some, some refinement required. Um, the googly eyes, of course, are not um, functional. They are just there for aesthetic purposes. Um, and shame, the poor thing is taking some strain after all of today's demos. But so the basic idea here is this is the very first, very first prototype produced, finished today, kinks to be ironed out. But um, essentially, it's going to be uh, the first, really, I think, highly capable locomotion wise uh, swarm robotics platform um, because uh, uh, all the swarm robots one sees you know uh, uh, for sale and, and uh, generally in the literature um, have quite basic sort of you know two wheels type locomotion which is fine for on a bench in the lab but not so much for, for real world and um, admittedly our little guy needs some some modifications made before it can handle uh, you know the real Big bad world out there, but um, uh, um, yeah. Tell us, tell us something about the uh, locomotion appendages, there, guys. Um, the locomotion is actually a strange mechanism. It's not quite walking legs, and not quite wheels. They call them legs. <laughs> so this is like a, a wheel design that has uh, spokes. So it's like. See there's three points on this. Yeah. Um, and you can have four or five, whatever. But its uh, basic idea is that it's three uh, point connection instead of um, flat connection like a wheel, which is just hits a bump and it drives over it. Whereas these, they have like uh, teeth and um, a different kind of uh, 
which is, allows them to grip onto obstacles and climb over them rather than just drive over them. So you can get over obstacles that are a little bit bigger than you with the same size wheels. So it's got all the simplicity of wheels, but with um, improved obstacle crossing capabilities. Yes. One of the downsides is that the, you can you can climb over obstacles that are now like uh, quite tall, um, but it also puts you a bit off balance because, especially with this robot, it's a bit top heavy. Yeah. You sometimes need to add a tail like this. <laughs> so this is a, um, a state of the art alloy system. <laughs> that, so shiny. Very shiny, and it allows us to uh, climb up large obstacles and also kind of just on the ground rather than flicking over. Because otherwise, you'd be like, oh. In all seriousness, I do think a slightly refined uh, uh, implementation of a tail um, might really help. Be, be a good addition to these little robots. What are the advantages of using legs as opposed to something like tracks, like a tank? Um, tracks are. Basically, they're really good for a rough terrain that's like uh, nice and uneven, kind of like you know dirt and mud. But it's all it's all kind of level but uneven, and they're quite quick at that. Um, good for grip. Whereas wegs are good for things like rocks here, that have got boulders and odd, odd strange obstacles that you, you need. Like, uh, yeah, like tracks aren't really the best for sort of step ledge climbing. Uh, uh, they're not great for that. So that's where legs hold the advantage. They are kind of a niche, but I think it's one that, that really suits uh, pipots. Yeah, yeah, certainly well worth investigating in more depth. So, yeah, that is about all we have to show you. Into oh oh, oh God, what happened there? there? Whoa, the robots. Whoa. They've autonomously explored the pipe system while we weren't looking. Okay, that's been the problem this whole time. They don't like moving when anyone's looking at them. Oh, ah. Goodness, Goodness we're such idiots. Um, but yes, so while you know we weren't looking, the shy swarm robots have um, begun spreading out to explore uh, like a swarm, like they are supposed to do. And um, look how amazed George is. I too am amazed. I can't believe it. Can't. Can't. <laughs> look, even our audience agrees. Somebody who I totally don't know and totally isn't actually a colleague of mine called Sh Cheng Zhu uh, says we have very impressive autonomy. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> These robots are now, so they're going back. They're back. Back to bed, and then we'll redeploy them later. Once again, it's not George lifting it manually at all. But yeah, folks, so I'm afraid that's basically all we have to actually show you. Um, we're, we would, though, be delighted to answer any questions that you uh, might like to pose to us in the chat. Um, I think you need to be watching through like YouTube itself rather than through the UK RAS website thingy to be able to ask us questions. Oh, question. Someone thinks, thinks they're, they're cute. cute. We, we agree. agree. Us or the robots? I, th I think you guys. I think they mean you guys and me as well. I think the three of us, we're all pretty cute, aren't we? But no, I suspect that they actually mean the robots and it's true and actually I think, you know, there's real scientific reasons why it is important to make robots look cute. Because, because they, they have, have to cohabit with people. People. Um, mm -hmm. people don't like scary, creepy looking robots. People like nice, cute looking robots. And so your robots, in all seriousness, are going to see much greater um, societal, you know, end user acceptance if they look kind of cute. Unless, I mean, yes. In the unlikely event that one of these robots was to crawl out of your toilet, which it definitely won't, um, then you, you'd rather it look cute, wouldn't you? I agree, definitely. Googly yeah. eyes. Googly eyes do go a long way. We've had um, we, we've had some some clarification uh, that 
this comment was uh, aimed at the rebels. Okay. Sorry to us. It's alright. We'll... <laughs> we'll live. We'll live. Okay, come on people. Please, we're going crazy here. We've, we're tired. We've done this a few, a few times. times. We're, 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 we're going insane. We need questions. We need questions to keep us on track. Please. Serious questions to keep us serious. Because we are serious. Serious roboticists. Serious engineers. Thirsty. Thirsty roboticists. Club is calling. It's gonna snapple. Which is fine. It's only super on this afternoon. Not the Avalanche balance device. Okay. Right, well, um. No questions. No. No. No further questions have come in. Um, do we have any concluding remarks that we would like to remark? Um, the robots do work most of the time. They do get very camera shy. Yeah, yeah, one, one of them does. I mean, you know. The curse of robotics that everything will go wrong when you're live streaming. Yes, yes, I mean, I mean that, is, that is far more likely, yeah. Yeah, no, and uh, and you know we've, uh, we've we've learned various things, improvements that need to be made. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. Um, I hope it's been interesting from the audience perspective. And I think I can think of nothing more to say. So uh, we are going to sign off. Uh, oh, we have we have a question. question. We have a question. <laughs> it's that lag. Uh, how to tackle the vertical pipes with the wheel legs? Fortunately, sewers don't have vertical pipes. They do have something even more difficult, which is large vertical gaps. Yeah, big drops. Between pipes. Um, good question. Uh, down, going down is quite easy. You just need the robot to be robust enough that, boom, doesn't die when it lands. Yeah, I mean, with Wags, you've got like, you've got Nick's option, wall press, which is great for pipes. Yeah. It doesn't work great for other non vertical pipes, there are better, better methods. Um, you've got things like magnets for adhesion, I guess. Only works on metal pipes. Only works on metal, which doesn't exist in the sewer. Yep, not much. And uh, traction's really difficult in the sewer anyway, because it's quite slippy, because of yep. all the, uh, the water. <laughs> yeah, and other things in the and water, yeah. Um, yeah, no, no, indeed, so good question. I mean, the heterogeneity approach, I think, is it might be a big part of it. Um, it's not out of the question to envision a flying member of the team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Drop things off, maybe, or a larger robot, you know, with an arm, um, or possibly, uh, possibly, 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 for the, the future, future, robots themselves could, uh, rather than just being a swarm, there could sort of be a modular swarm where the individual robots can actually like mechanically link with each other in order to form larger robots. Yeah, that's definitely like, a cool solution, like mechanically linking or um, climbing over each other like in a pile, like a, a biomass of swarm robots that, that, that go up a vertical pipe. Yeah. And we have another actual serious question. How will they keep clean in a sewer? Yeah, good question. Yes. Um, they don't. <laughs> they, they'll get really, really horrifically dirty. Yeah. And when they come out, we'll have to clean them. We, we need to, to seal them, them, I suppose. They'll be sealed, so better the than they are now. Will be the wegs and the, the entire body. Yeah. And the entire robot. Yeah. Yeah. The entire robot. But the internal, uh, the ports and electronics, the battery, they definitely can't be touched with all the. Uh, yeah. Sewage. So good so sealing and then seal post it. operational cleansing. Spray it down, get some Lynx Africa on that robot. <laughs> and on that note, I think we are going to say goodbye to you, our dear audience. That's all we've got in us. Stop leaving. So yeah, thanks thanks for coming. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Cheerio. Cheerio.